Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Joshua. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Kirkoff Technologies uh, and Mission Impact. So we're an IT services company here in uh, Chilliwack, British Columbia. And we have a particular focus on supporting nonprofit missions um, here in the lovely co-work Chilliwack space uh, to speak to one of our clients, Ruth and Naomi's mission. And I'm here today with Scott Gallardi and Cheryl Griesbrecht. Hi, it's good to be here. Thank you. I'm Isabel. I'm the VCIO and AVP projects for our companies. So I work with IT leaders to develop an IT vision and solve organizational problems using technologies. And then I work with our projects team to develop those technologies and implement them uh, before our service team helps you with ongoing support. Can you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? I am Cheryl, and I've been with Ruth and Naomi's for about nine years now. And I've held various roles throughout those years, but I am currently the Director of Operations for Ruth and Naomi's. And my name is Scott. I'm the Executive Director of Ruth and Naomi's, and I've been in that role for 18 months. Prior to that, I was on the board and been lived in Chilliwack for 10 years and got involved again as a volunteer through Church Connections. And yeah, so yeah, good to... and if you could just introduce the mission. Sure. Ruth and Naomi's is a faith-based uh, human services organization that started about 22 years ago. Ted and Ann Stoker were our founders, and they're just two people that started serving sandwiches out of the back of their vehicle down at Five Corners, and they saw a need and responded. People began to gather around that. It got a little more organized, and it's grown to where it is today. We have about 100 employees and three different facilities kind of operating a continuum of care that starts in our community outreach center, which is kind of ground zero. And then it moves to our men's and women's addiction recovery programming that there's supportive housing and a family center and medical clinic and just a bunch of wraparound and support services in between as we just walk alongside people on their journey forward. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you for, for giving us that overview. I remember when I started working with Ruth and Naomi's would have been in 2014, not long after I started with Kirkhoff Technologies. At that point, I think there was maybe five to 10 people, one building. So it's amazing to hear how far you've come over the last the last 10 years that uh, that we've been working together. So as you've grown, what sort of challenges have you have you found in that? That's pretty rapid growth. Um, particularly, I know the the challenges of a charity organisation. Um, yeah, maybe tell us a little bit about some of the some of the challenges you've faced along the way. I think uh, in 2015 is when I started with uh, Ruth and Naomi's and I've seen huge growth in that time. As you mentioned, our employee base has grown from about six or seven when I was there, when I first started to over a hundred now. And so one of the challenges I think uh, has been just the communication aspect. Um, when you're a group of five or six people meeting together, it's easy to communicate and to get, um, stay on top of information. I think as we expanded, um, in numbers and then eventually to various sites, it was uh, yeah, it was definitely a big challenge to understand what we needed in the area of communications. Okay. Yeah, anything you wanted to add there, Scott? Uh, well, again, as Cheryl said, I, I well, she's been there through most of the journey. I've just been there the last 18 months. And so kind of, yeah, learning, okay, how do we develop infrastructure, HR, policies, communications, that was what was once in the back of a vehicle or one location is now three and how to just make sure that we're not, uh, one of our strengths that we continue to lean into is that we have a continuum of care, not three separate uh, facilities siloed. And so how do we just make sure that there is that handing off uh, and supporting each other? Sure. Do you want to tell us a little bit just about the three the three locations you've got? Mm -hmm. Happy to do so. Uh, the first is the Margaret Avenue facility. That's our community outreach center, which was the original facility. It used to be the office, our men's recovery program, and community dining hall. Mm -hmm. I remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the place where most people are again when they think of Ruth and Naomi's. That's probably what they tend to think about. Uh, now it there's over a hundred people a night that we provide shelter. Four, there's three meals and two snacks that provided to anybody. So it's about 400 meals a day. 
that go out there. Then there's laundry and shower and hygiene services. And it is a real hub for other community organizations and services to come and connect with people experiencing homelessness or at, and at risk of homelessness. So lots of supports that go on there, medical health. There is also some uh, reducing harm services that are offered there as we respond to the toxic, you know, drug over to, um, epidemic and just helping people stay alive so that they can make choices to move forward. So that's ground zero, the community outreach center. And then across the, or then yeah, across the alleyway is our family center, which opened in 2019. Yes. And that is where our offices are. And so there are 36, one, two, and three bedroom apartments for uh, parent parents with children in their care. That is rent below, you know, market or rent geared to income. That's where our offices are, our women's, uh, recovery program is currently housed there, as well as our New Hope Health Medical Clinic. So there's medical, chiropractic, um, pharmacy, and counseling, and we're in the process of launching a not-for-profit dental clinic, hopefully later this year. Fantastic. Uh, and then the third facility currently is the used to be the Travel Lodge IHOP or mm -hmm. Pantry, depending on where you were, and yeah. it is now it houses our Oasis Men's Recovery. So we have rooms for up to twenty men in there, and they can stay there for up to two years. And then there's fifty nine supportive housing residents where individuals can live there. There's four case managers, navigators we refer to them as mm -hmm. that again will walk walk with people along their journey. And so those are the three locations. And uh, we are working on a uh, fourth that will expand the number of beds for our women's recovery program. Okay. But that's you know, in the works. Gotcha. Fantastic. Yeah. So each step of the way that you've had these, these projects and these expansions, you've been working with Kirkhoff Technologies. Um, so what can you tell us about the experience of working with, with us on some of these, particularly the larger infrastructure projects, the setup of the interchange, mm -hmm. for example? It's, yeah, I, I can speak yeah. a bit yeah, okay. to the, yeah, 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 yeah. well, yes, particularly yeah. the family center. I yeah. can speak more on that because I was a little bit involved in that. But uh, Kirkhoff was uh, really invaluable in getting things set up there because at the beginning of that, we weren't even sure what our needs were going to be. And so right from the beginning, Kirkhoff was helping us to even determine what those needs might be. And then from that, developing a plan of how to implement some of the systems um, and then actually executing these and training some of our staff and uh, getting basically everything set up for us. Um, the beginning phases when you're learning new technology, when you're new, new, uh, learning new systems, there, uh, you know, we were reaching out to Kirkhoff quite regularly for support, and we were really appreciative because it was always a very quick response. Um, we had people coming on site. Joshua was one of them mm -hmm. back in the day, and yep. uh, and just walking us through whatever we needed help with. And so, um, very, very appreciative of that. Yeah, fantastic. That's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. I do definitely remember crawling around under some yes. desks, um, <laughs> terminating some cables that that uh, the electrician hadn't quite finished right. just because we needed to get some some computers online. So <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely remember that. Yeah, a lot of people think of. When they're working with nonprofits, they think of like business is business, so to speak. But nonprofit organizations are not a business, right? Um, you have different needs, different requirements, different purpose. Um, what can you tell us about some of the unique challenges that faces an organization um, when you're when you're running day to day operations for an organization like Ruth and Naomi's? Well, some of it is as a uh, nonprofit. There's uh, again funding and raising resources to be able to meet the needs and sometimes we feel like we're playing a little bit of catch up mm -hmm. as we may take on a contract or an opportunity or see a need and want to step into it so we it hasn't all often been where we can you know sit down and say let's design a system or let's do this as we're preparing yeah. to step that and we're getting better at that but it's sometimes been a little bit of catch up and then the just the capacity of of people finding people to help with some of the needs mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on with an organization like Ruth and Naomi's. How do you feel technology has helped or hindered, or lack of technology has hindered um, that growth? Um, what kind of struggles do you have as a team that you feel or maybe solved with technology? You spoke about communications mm -hmm. as being one before. Um, do you have like other thoughts around some of those? I think technology has definitely helped, again, uh, communication as, as the number of employees and just some of our 
the, the channels that we're going to communicate on or f- access to files or different people are going to need. Again, we're not in one location where we can right. just move things around and uh, having Kirkhoff be able to come in and, and we were able to say, okay, this is where we're at today. How can we have some systems to share these communications and files and access in a secure manner, but also looking down the road where there may be another location or more employees and having right. your uh, foresight to say, well, let's design the system in such a way. So, yeah, I think technology and Kirkhoff particularly has been a huge help in us being able to facilitate the growth of the organization and make sure that all those necessary communications are happening. So as well as the planning services that we've kind of touched on, uh, one of the other things that we've started doing in the past few years is, is what we're calling our on-site days. Um, so where we basically send a technician on site, um, that are then available for, for kind of any work that's required. Um, the reason behind that was really that we knew that there were a lot of day-to-day challenges that our customers were having where for whatever reason they didn't feel that they wanted to to pick up the phone and create a ticket and go through that process and we just mm-hmm. felt that we could really smooth over some of those challenges. So um, can you tell us a little bit about how that's worked out for you and how maybe that's helped um, your day-to-day? So we have had somebody come on site every week. And until you mentioned creating a ticket, I'd actually forgotten about that (laughs) step that we used to have to do. And it was an obstacle. It was a little bit of a frustration of having to, you know, get in line to have your issues met. Um, However, with having somebody on site, it's been really helpful. Uh, Once a week, anything that's not urgently pressing, we can save and then Mm -hmm. work through it. We have the... um, Brent is our technician's name, and he is always willing to just help walk us through um, as quickly or as slowly as we need any issues that arise, and that's been really helpful. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brent is, has been a real asset in that role. Yeah. Um, it's a not a natural skill set sometimes for technicians right. to, to be in that kind mm-hmm. of environment and the social environment, so yeah, we're really, really pr- pr- uh, pleased and proud of what Brent has done and mm-hmm. working on, you know, working with him to to train our other team members because this is a service that we have had a lot of success with and we want to keep offering because mm-hmm. I think it helps efficiencies on your side and, and on ours as well. It means that we can really have that dedicated focus and make sure we're moving things to where we want them to. Yeah. So yeah. thank you very much for that. So where does the name Ruth and Naomi's actually come from? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. That's a question that tends to come up a lot. People wonder if they're going to meet Ruth and Naomi at some point. Right. And uh, Ruth and Naomi's is a Jesus-centered, faith-based organization. And those names come from a story in the Bible from the book of Ruth. It's a short four-chapter little story that tells this amazing recovery, this amazing journey of recovery, which is where we get a lot of our values from and our continuum of care. Naomi is the mother-in-law and Ruth is the daughter-in-law. There's kind of two central figures in this journey. Uh, In chapter one, the bottom has fallen out. It's been loss, grief, trauma, and they're just trying to They were in the worst possible places, just making decisions simply to survive. And from an outsider's perspective, some of the decisions they're making seem unconscionable. You think, why in the world would they choose to do that? But they're they're in a place of loss and grief, simply making decisions that they will help them stay alive. And so we recognize as an organization for that lots of reasons, people find themselves in that place just simply making decisions to survive. And they may not be decisions that an outsider would understand or make sense to, but we say, that's a reality. And so we recognize that's a reality. And we as an organization want to be there in that place so that if, as, and when people decide to make a step forward in their journey of recovery, we're there with them. The end of chapter one, they do begin to make a decision. They make a decision to move forward. You get into chapter two and they've kind of moved back home and they go out into the fields and they begin working. They kind of work the systems. There were systems in place in that day to help people get ahead, help them get food and nourishment and provide for their families. And they just began to work some of those systems and and make them avail themselves of that. And as they went out to do that, they were met by an individual who met them with kindness, curiosity, and empathy and came alongside them. And so we want, again, as an organization, make sure that there are programs, supports, systems in place that people who are wanting to move forward in a journey of recovery can work those programs, if you will. But we also want to be individuals that will meet people in that place with kindness, curiosity, and empathy and walk alongside them. 
chapter three in the journey, the mother-in-law says to the daughter-in-law, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit, she says, if this recovery journey is really going to take root, we need to find you housing. And so as an organization, we say, how can we help shelter people uh, in shelters and supportive housing and non-market housing to recognize that that housing is a human right and we want to help people find that. By the time you get to chapter four, Ruth and Naomi are in a, surrounded by a supportive community. They're in healthy relationships. Their faith has been reinvigorated part of their life. And they're looking to the future with a real sense of hope and optimism. And so that's this journey that we would hope we'd have the privilege of walking alongside many as they go from maybe chapter one to chapter four. It, it isn't always that smooth or those steps in that order, but that's, that's where we'd hope uh, people would be in healthy relationships, a supportive community around them. Faith would be a vibrant part of their lives and the future would have some hope. Fantastic. So thanks for asking, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's excellent. So starting with empathy and kindness and absolutely. understanding the humanity of, of people and why they make the decisions that they might make and walking alongside them. And I can I can see how that, that follows what I know about how Ruth and Naomi's mm. operates and works with people. So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, thank you, Josh. Organizations the size of Ruth and Naomi's rarely have a chief information officer, a CIO, that takes responsibility for the long-term IT planning. Um, so in addition to the general IT support, um, how has the CIO services that Kirkhoff Technologies offers you, how has that helped to guide your organization? Uh, it's been very helpful because, again, we there's different opportunities where there, there was one particular where there was some funding that was available to yeah. address IT needs. And, and we can I can think of, well, I need another computer. I need this. But Kirkhoff was invaluable as we come and said, here's some here's some resource that we're going to have. And we said, OK, well, help us. Let us help you shape some of those systems that are a little more forward thinking as well. You know, when we look at privacy and all the different security and some of the needs, uh, those are not areas that are expertise. And so to have, but they're areas they're, that need to be addressed, need to be addressed appropriately because some of the information we deal with and documents that. So to have an organization like Kirkhoff that can help us whether that's just managing more employees and the flow of communication or addressing some of those larger issues like security and privacy and others like that. That's fantastic. Excellent. I think, too, um, technology changes so quickly. And if we didn't have somebody that was actively looking out for what our needs may be um, coming up, then uh, we would be really struggling in some areas. And so just having Kirkhoff to identify where we're going and what our needs might be and recognizing that that technology is changing. So you might want to look in another direction. That's been really helpful to us. Thank you very much. That's really the questions that we had that we had for today. Um, and it was stories, information that you've given us today that really inspired us to to set up a new brand, the Mission Impact brand. Um, so Mission Impact's an IT services brand under KTI, really focusing on nonprofits. And the idea is to allow us to speak to non-commercial organisations in their language. Mm. Because as the more we worked with these teams, the clearer it was that you know, treating them the same as our commercial clients was missing a key aspect of what, of what made them unique. The Mission Impact is a team that focuses on non-commercial organizations. We do understand the unique differences uh, between, you know, a nonprofit or a charity and a commercial business. Um, so as part of the Kirkhoff Technologies family, Mission Impact does have a same team of leaders that have been in IT for 20 plus years. And our goal is to really empower organizations using technology to grow and thrive in ways that lets them be more productive and improve their mission outcomes. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, thank right. you. Yeah. Do you guys have feedback or thoughts on on setting up a specific brand and team inside of our organization to deal with nonprofits and charities? From the nonprofit lens, I know, yeah, there, there are to have access to services like Kirkhoff provides from the just the weekly tech support to the, you know, longer, larger, long term planning and addressing mm -hmm. some of the technology issues, it's fantastic for us because we don't have the the personnel or the capacity to have people mm -hmm. in those roles. Mm -hmm. So from a nonprofit lens, I'm, I'm not sure how it lands on your end, but it's been invaluable for us. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was really something that we that we wanted to do because you know, even as an IT company, we see how fast things are changing mm -hmm. and we think, well, this is going to be a lot of work to keep up. And we have a team of, of IT professionals. So working with organizations and particularly the, the challenges, like you said, with funding um, for 
for nonprofits, it, it, it is a difficult thing to navigate, but there are also things out there that, that we can help with. So you know, we, can, we can bring grants potentially, help with those processes, uh, bring knowledge from having other nonprofit clients, right. um, have that pooled knowledge. So that's that's sort of was the was the driver behind behind coming up with something something to really focus yeah. and and get that message across in a way that was not we do nonprofits but we also do commercial like right. muddying the waters if you like just right. be you know this is really focused on that nonprofit on on their needs um, how we can help them just a little side fact the the on site tech support came out of a conversation not too different from this hmm. from one of our other. Um, okay. supportive housing clients further up the valley that was like, you guys are doing this stuff great, but this is what we really need. Mm, right. And yeah. so it was a, a new service that came out of that. And so don't ever hesitate to, if there's something we're not doing yep. that maybe, you know, isn't on our radar because of, you know, for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. just don't ever hesitate to be yeah. like, you know what, this is, this is not working really well. What can we do to kind of improve that? And yeah. something like the on-site tech days were born out of out of those that kind of Great. feedback. So. Fantastic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you for your time okay. today. Oh, yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep.